healthy. Okay, next I would like to introduce Dr. Jason Worley, who will discuss treatment options for osteoarthritis and ways to help you feel empowered in your healthcare journey. Dr. Worley is the Senior Medical Director of the Bone and Joint Health Strategic Clinical Network and the Chief Section of Orthopedic Surgery, University of Calgary. He's also the President of the Canadian Arthroplasty Society and a McCaig Institute member. Dr. Worley grew up on a farm near Langenberg, Saskatchewan, and believes that the upbringing that he had really taught him the importance of hard work and a sense of optimism for the future. He stayed close to home to earn his Doctor of Medicine from the University of Saskatchewan, later traveling farther afield to have complete a fellowship at Stanford University in California. His current orthopedic surgery practice is focused on joint replacements and single limb trauma surgery. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you at home, please welcome Dr. Worley. Thank you, uh, Lisa, and thank you to the Wood family for this uh, opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, the title of my talk is, ouch, my, uh, enter your, your joint name, so you could put hip, knee, shoulder, base of your thumb hurts, nine steps that can help you. So I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Rocky View Hospital. I spend my OR days uh, replacing knees and hips, so I certainly identify with the glint in your eye when I have a hammer in my hand that Dr. Boyd was mentioning at the uh, early part. Um, it's a successful operation. Uh, you know, it changes people's quality of life, uh, eliminates pain in the vast majority of cases, um, and, and uh, it really has good results. But really, I'm here to talk to you about patients that don't need joint replacement. Uh, this is the osteoarthritis treatment pyramid, and it's from an article by Eva Roos, who developed the GLAD program. And what it demonstrates is that surgery is really just for a small portion of patients that have osteoarthritis. There's lots of other treatments, including education, exercise, weight control, and other uh, medical treatments that can be used prior to someone actually needing a joint replacement. And some don't ever go on to require a hip or a knee replacement. It's a big problem. One in eight Albertans has osteoarthritis of the hip or knee or other joints. It's more than half a million people in our province. And about 40% of visits to family doctors are related to musculoskeletal problems. And the majority are for osteoarthritis. There is a gap in care. We know about 20,000 people with osteoarthritis of the hip or knee are referred to an orthopedic surgeon in Alberta each year, but half of them don't require surgery and are considered non-surgical. And unfortunately, to date, there hasn't been unified guidance for Albertans, for practitioners, or for patients to help navigate evidence-based non-surgical OA treatments. So to address this gap in care, a clinical committee was developed by our strategic clinical network. A multidisciplinary team of OA experts came together from across the province beginning in January 2019. And the purpose was to provide an independent review and set standards for the best possible care for individuals that are living with osteoarthritis. And the first project was to design clinical practice guidelines to support people with OA throughout their journey with the disease. This is uh, the infographic of what was developed, and we'll go through the nine different steps in, in uh, more detail in the slides that are upcoming. But it's important to note that individual preferences, values, goals, and individual quality of life was incorporated into the planning for these quality care standards. The purpose of the standards is to help patients and their families understand the best care options for managing hip and knee osteoarthritis in Alberta to guide clinicians on the best practices for osteoarthritis care based on strong published literature and also expert consensus, and to provide healthcare organizations like Alberta Health and Alberta Health Services with tools to measure, analyze, and improve the quality of care for people with hip or knee osteoarthritis. So we'll just briefly touch on the nine steps. Step one is to get assessed for osteoarthritis. And this can be done by a variety of clinicians. There are family physicians, there's physiotherapists, athletic therapists, chiropractors, kinesiologists, many people who are trained in the diagnosis of osteoarthritis. And at most, you need a plain x-ray. And, and it's uh, illustrated in the bottom of the uh, slide where you can see the difference between a healthy knee where there's still a joint space and cartilage present versus an arthritic knee where that joint space is gone and it's bone on bone. 
I put an MRI scanner picture on the left-hand bottom si uh, of the slide just to remind you, you do not need an MRI to diagnose osteoarthritis. And Dr. Walker, an expert radiologist, is going to talk to you uh, more about that in one of the upcoming talks. The second step is to develop a care plan, plan with your provider, regardless of who that provider is, whether it's a physiotherapist or a family physician. Having regular check-ins on your care plan would be important. The third step is to tailor treatments over time. Osteoarthritis is a chronic disease, and treatments will change over time. There are many, many treatments in the osteoarthritis toolbox, the core treatments being education, exercise, and physical activity and weight management, but there are also adjunct treatments, such as non-pharmacological and pharmacological treatments. Step four is to get educated. And we're fortunate to have many resources locally and provincially as well as online. The Arthritis Society and MyHealthAlberta.ca are very good online resources and organizations to help learn more about osteoarthritis. There's also the GLAD program offered in physiotherapy clinics around the province, and then the University of Calgary Joint Effort Program, Alberta Healthy Living, and also your family physician and, and, and physiotherapist can help. Step five is exercise. It is a myth that one shouldn't exercise because it could cause more damage to your joint when you have osteoarthritis. Abundant global literature indicates that you should continue to do low-impact exercise to help, uh, ge generally from uh, your overall health, your mental health, your cardiovascular health, as well as uh, your joints. The target is 150 minutes per week of moderate or vigorous aerobic activity, and it's low-impact activity. So that's 30 minutes five times a week. I would recommend walking, uh, aqua size or cycling. Step six is to manage your weight, and that's core treatment three. And it's important to know because of the biomechanics of the hip or the knee that every little bit helps. So every pound lost is about four to six pounds across the knee or the hip. And it's important to keep those goals in mind. Why is it important? Well, if you do happen to fail conservative treatment and go on to surgery for a joint replacement, there is a drastic difference in outcomes when people are overweight versus not overweight. This is Alberta-based data from the Alberta Bone and Joint Health Institute on patients, Albertans, that have had joint replacements. And the risk of an early revision, a failure of their joint replacement, is almost double in patients that have a body mass index greater than 30 versus below 30. The odds of a medical adverse event like a heart attack or stroke around the time of surgery is 1.38 times higher for obese patients versus non-obese patients. The odds of a pulmonary embolism, a blood clot that goes to the lungs, is 1.5 times higher. And the odds of a deep infection are 3.6 times higher in people that have a BMI over 30 versus under 30. There are many additional treatments, adjunct treatments, that can be added. Some of them are medicines, some of um, them are uh, non-medicines. Non some of them are bracing, uh, you could use a cane. There are uh, cognitive and behavioral therapy sessions or interdisciplinary self-management programs. And then there's the pharmacological treatments as well. And many of you are familiar with these, like Tylenol for arthritis, which has a large safety profile and can be taken regularly. Sometimes prescription medications are required, like anti-inflammatories. Um, opioids really don't have a role in the treatment of osteoarthritis and uh, are not recommended. And then occasionally intraarticular injections, like the use of cortisone or hyaluronic acid, such as Synvisc or Duralane, can be used to uh, treat people's uh, symptoms. Step eight is to get referred for joint surgery if you fail conservative treatments. We're very fortunate to live in Alberta. We have the Alberta Surgical Initiative, and although the pandemic has uh, impacted wait times, this initiative is going to continue forward, and hopefully with the, uh, the new premier, it's gonna continue forward. Um, there are five strategies. The overall goal is to reduce wait times for people waiting for surgery, and that includes orthopedic surgery and hip and knee replacements. And one component of the Alberta Surgical Initiative is the facilitated access to specialized treatment, or the FAST program, which is being implemented as we speak province-wide and is a central intake and triage system to ensure that uh, patients see the right provider at the right time in the quickest possible uh, time. And then step nine is to measure quality of care. Again, we're fortunate. We have the McKaig Institute for Bone and Joint Health and the Mobility for Life program. There's also the Bone and Joint Health Strategic Clinical Network. I'm the medical director for that. There's the Alberta Bone and Joint Health Institute and their Map to Motion program. 
And uh, all of these entities are uh, uh, providing research, and I encourage all of you, if you're handed a questionnaire or a survey, to complete it because it will help improve the quality of your care in the future, and it will help uh, with uh, other patients that are undergoing treatments for osteoarthritis. As well, we're, we send data from Alberta to the Canadian Institute for Health Information. Every patient that gets a joint replacement in the province of Alberta has data sent to the Canadian Joint Replacement Registry, so we monitor the performance of these joint replacements. And then our clinical information system across Alberta within Alberta Health Services is called Connect Care, and that's being implemented. So regardless of where you receive care in the health system, it can, uh, it can be identified and there'll be continuity of care. So if you want to access these standards, uh, we have some postcards on some tables at the back during the, uh, during the session afterwards. Uh, we'll have this website and the links. And so there's full standards. There's a one-pager summary and the reference guides. I encourage you to use these uh, resources. This is what it looks like when you uh, go online so you can uh, navigate yourself through the website. In summary, osteoarthritis is a chronic disease. Symptoms will wax and wane over time. There are many tools in the OA toolbox. Education, exercise, and weight management are core treatments, and evidence-based uh, non-pharmacological and pharmacological adjuncts can help. Surgery is a good option when conservative treatments fail, and measurement is the key to improving our healthcare system. Thank you. <laughs>